Red light devices are all of the rage these days on social media, with beauty influencers up and down your newsfeed claiming them as the secret to clear skin. But do these devices actually work? In this video, I'm going to do an unsponsored breakdown of these different red light devices and talk to you about which of their claims might be scientific and which of them might be bullshit. Just to reiterate, this video is not sponsored by any of these different products and I refuse to take skincare related sponsorships on this channel. So you know that my reviews will always be honest because I have no reason to be biased. My name is Osama and I'm a board certified dermatologist living and working in New York. I hate a lot of the nonsense going on in the skincare world. So on this channel, I like to debunk a lot of skincare myths. I like to dunk on overpriced skincare products. And I also like to do scientific explainers. If you want to support me in that mission, make sure you're subscribed below. And without further ado, let's talk about red light treatment. Okay. Okay, so let me get this straight. Light shines onto your skin, and that's supposed to change the way the cells in your body actually function. That sounds a little bit far-fetched, am I right? But it is actually true. This phenomena known as photobiomodulation is actually real. The way it works is as follows. Light is just a type of energy and different wavelengths of light are absorbed by different targets. When a specific target known as a photoreceptor absorbs light of a certain wavelength, that energy then starts off a biological cascade leading to different functions. So what is red light? Well, a quick recap of physics will tell us that light exists across an entire spectrum. And within this spectrum, red light refers to the wavelength of light existing between 630 and 850 nanometers. Now, there are two main methods we use to generate light in this red light spectrum. One is using LEDs or light emitting diodes. These are cheap, lightweight, and flexible. And so any at-home device that you see will inevitably be using LED technology. They do emit light at the right wavelength, but they do so in a less consistent and less concentrated manner when we compare it to option number two, which is using laser technology. Now, the red light produced by lasers is much more concentrated and can penetrate deeper. So the effects that you're going to get from that type of red light are way stronger, but these are way more expensive and they come with very bulky equipment. The only reason I mentioned this to begin with in the video is a lot of studies looking into the effects of red light use laser technology. So be really careful when taking those study results and applying it to these at-home devices. So what does the science actually actually show when it comes to the effects of red light on the skin. Let's start with skin rejuvenation and anti-aging. In a placebo-controlled, double-blinded, split-face trial using light of the wavelength of 633 nanometers and 830 nanometers, it was found that there was a significant anti-aging effect when using that red light. They took biopsies and they showed that the level of collagen and elastic fibers were much higher in the side that was treated with the red wavelength light. And they also showed an increase in the amount and activity of the fibroblasts, which are the cells that produce that collagen. All of this was backed up with clinical assessments showing a reduced amount of wrinkles and also an increased skin elasticity in the side that was treated with red light. One mechanism behind this was suggested to be increased levels of TIMP1 and TIMP2. So if you use a red light device and start feeling like a Tim, now you know why. Now tuned into the greatest. I'm completely ashamed of myself. I did three lines of setup just for that one second snippet of a joke. But what's really cool about these studies, aside from the fact that they were well structured, they had really objective data when it came to outcomes, is the fact that they used an LED device to achieve those results and not even a laser. However, the LED device they used was the medical grade Omnilux, which looks like this and which has specifications like this. And I'm gonna come back to these specifications later when I talk about some at-home devices. So I hope you've memorized every single line of this table. So what about when it comes to acne? Once again, low-level light therapy actually has pretty solid evidence that it can be beneficial for those people suffering with acne. However, in this case, it's actually blue light that is slightly more beneficial. And yes, no expense has been spared in this video. If you're wondering how I did that, I actually have an app on my phone and I've been using it to control the light. I had to redo it around five times to get the timing right, so I hope you appreciated that small gimmick. The way blue light helps for acne is that acne is caused and in some cases worsened by a specific type of bacteria known as Propionobacterium acnes. This type of bacteria produces a substance known as porphyrin, and I'm not gonna go into any more details about porphyrin because I'm gonna get PTSD about medical school. All you need to know about porphyrins for the sake of this video is that they absorb blue light and they release something called free radicals. And these are really destructive to whatever is around them, which in this case is P. acnes. So blue light causes the death of P. acnes and therefore makes acne severity better. But what about red light? Well, there is some evidence showing that red light can also be independently helpful when it comes to acne by increasing cell turnover and reducing inflammation. A randomized control trial of 107 different participants with moderate to severe acne showed that a combination of red light and blue light performed better than blue light by itself. This combination produced a significant improvement and actually outperformed benzoyl peroxide, which is one of our first line treatments for acne. So it does look like low level light treatment, including both blue and in this case, red light can be beneficial for acne. Hair loss is another condition where low-level light therapy has shown really convincing results on a reproducible basis. 
Now, I'm not going to go into this one in too much detail because I'm going to do a whole separate video in future about hair loss treatment options, and this will be one of them. And finally, when it comes to wound healing, even though that's not the main thing it's used for, it has been shown that red light therapy can be very helpful, although almost all of these studies are done using laser devices and not LED ones. So that's all great when it comes to potential theoretical benefit, but what about these actual commercially available devices that we've seen all over subway ads and on social media? Let's start with SolarWave, which seems like the hot new thing. Now, the SolarWave website mentions all of the different potential benefits of red light therapy which we've already gone over but let's get into the specifications of their actual device they mentioned that their red light device produces light at 630 nanometers which is the right wavelength we also know that it's an led based device because it's available for at-home use and it's really small and that's completely fine because it's an at-home device but just keep in mind that it's not going to penetrate as deep as a laser but after all of that what i wanted to know was how strong a dose of light do they deliver Thinking back to that specification table you memorized from earlier, you will of course remember that the device used in the clinical trials was creating a power output of 105 milliwatts per centimeter squared. According to the SolarWave Skincare One's product specifications, they produce a maximum output density of 40 to 45 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Now, I don't really know what they mean by maximum here. Does that mean that they consistently produce 40 to 45 milliwatts per centimeter squared? Or does that mean that once in testing ever, they maybe saw a spike to that number and they decided to advertise that? I don't know, but let's be generous and assume that that is a consistent output. Even then, it is less than half of the power density of the device that we saw in clinical trials having proven benefit. Now, the other issue I have with the Solar Wave wand is that it delivers all of this output with just seven LEDs in a tiny little strip. That means that even though it's a nice light device, you have to ask yourself, how many seconds of exposure is each area of skin actually getting to this red light across a regular treatment? It must be so hard to standardize exactly how much time you spend on each area, and how do you make sure that you're not going doubly over one area and not at all over another one? But I guess the good thing about this one is that if there was just one area you wanted to treat and not your whole face, you could be really specific with it. So does the solar wave device actually work? Now this is a really difficult question because we don't have fantastic clinical trial data using their actual device. The best guide we have from their own website is using the before and after photos which they have given us. And I think it's worth looking at some of these. Okay, so I actually have the before and after photos up here right now, and I'm going to talk you through them. So let's start off with Melanie41, who apparently has used the SolarWave device for just 10 minutes per day, three times per week. And yet, by day 21, she has achieved some pretty extraordinary looking results. If we add all of this together, it's three times per week and three weeks. So she's used the device for a total of 90 minutes. Now, superficially, you would look at this and think, wow, with just 90 minutes of total use with that little red wand, she has actually had a dramatic transformation when it comes to her skin. But what they've done here is something which I hate about before and after photos. And the first thing you can see is the lighting is different. The angle is different. The photo on the right is clearly way brighter and that makes such a big difference when it comes to the appearance of your skin. Secondly, you can see that the photo on the right, she's slightly turning towards the left rather than completely front on and that also makes a difference in terms of appearance of lines. And it also looks like Melanie may have had her eyebrows done between picture one and picture two here. And I'm not saying you need to get your eyebrows done, but it makes a difference in terms of how you look. So let's move on to picture number two here, which is Jamie25 who apparently has again used the device for three minutes per day, three times per week. And on day 10, he's had a dramatic reduction in his overall acne. I want you to think about this. There has only been nine days between picture one and picture two here. And apparently Jamie has used it three minutes per day, three times per week. So let's say he's used it a total of four times because it's only been a week and a half and three minutes each, that's 12 minutes of use of that tiny wand has apparently completely transformed Jamie's acne. Now it's not just that one spot that's got better. I could believe that spots do come and go within 10 days. But if you look at the overall background acne, it looks like there's multiple deep cystic lesions on day one and on day 10, there are none of those. And apparently that is with just 12 minutes of use of this little red light wand. I call bullshit. Now let's move on to James 40, who has used it for five minutes per day, three times per week. Okay, so he's used 15 minutes per week. And apparently there's just three weeks between these two photos. So a total of 45 minutes of red light wand use has completely transformed James's face. They point out the under eye area in particular here, and this really pisses me off because you can clearly tell that in photo number one, James is looking down. In photo number two, James is looking up. Do you know what happens when you look down? You get little kind of jelly rolls underneath your eyes. So in picture number two, he's looking directly forwards, so those disappear. 
The other thing is, James seems to have discovered a ring light in the three weeks between these photos. Because of that, photo number two is brighter and he's looking directly at the camera and his eyes are sparkling and so it looks like photo number two is a dramatic difference. And finally, let's end with Stephanie37, who has used it for 15 minutes per day, three times a week. Okay, so that's 45 minutes per week, but she's only used it for two weeks between these two photos. So a total of an hour and a half of red light wand use has apparently reduced her under eye wrinkles. Now that would be pretty impressive, but once again, look carefully at photo one and photo two. You will see that photo two is slightly more zoomed out. Photo two is brighter, both of which psychologically make that photo look better. And finally, you can see that in photo one, she's smiling with her eyes slightly more. And in photo number two, she's smiling with her eyes slightly less. A good test of this is if you cover her mouth and forehead in both photos and you just compare her eyes and try and take a guess which photo is she happier in, you will guess that in photo one she's happier and that's because she's smiling more. And what happens when we smile more with our eyes? We get more lines underneath them. And so that's why once again, I think this is really misleading. I just realized that I could have been out of focus that entire time because I think it was focusing on my iPad, but oh well. These types of misleading before and after photos with ludicrously short time intervals, different lighting, different angles, different expressions, they drive me crazy. For me, if you're resorting to these cheap and exaggerated claims, it probably means that your product doesn't actually do that much. Now, SolarWave does have a policy that within 30 days, if you're not finding results, you're allowed to return the device, no questions asked. For me, that's not actually a vote of confidence in how good the product is that there's no way you'd ever want to return it. I think it might be the manufacturers having a sense that maybe this thing doesn't actually work and we don't have that much good evidence showing that it does work. But hey, if we have a very generous returns policy, nobody can criticize us because if it didn't work for you, you can return it. Now, all the while, I think they're banking on the fact that after 30 days, people will still feel like they haven't given it a proper try and they're probably just gonna be lazy and forget to return it. Now, you might call me cynical for this and, and maybe I am, but those before and after photos just triggered me. So what about other red light devices? The other most popular red light devices include the Spectralight Facewear Pro and the Omnilux Contour Face. For power output comparisons, the Spectralite device produces a really impressive 150 milliwatts per centimeter squared, and the Omnilux one produces just 41 milliwatts per centimeter squared. But here's the thing, even with the 41 milliwatt output from the Omnilux device, I actually trust it way more than SolarWave. And that's because Omnilux has a great reputation in the field. They produce a lot of medical grade red light LED devices. And so if they say it's 41 milliwatts, I actually believe it. Whereas when SolarWave said maximum output of 40 to 45, that probably means they produce like 20. The other thing about the output from these two devices as compared to the SolarWave wand is that they are both full face masks, which means that I'm much more reassured that you're getting the appropriate contact time and exposure to all the different areas of your skin. And it's not just you waving it around and sometimes hitting and sometimes missing. Also, the Spectralite Facewear Pro actually has FDA approval when it comes to anti-aging efficacy. And that's really impressive because they have to go through some pretty rigorous testing to be able to get that approval. But let's be fair, both of these face masks are actually far more expensive than the SolarWave and they're priced at around $400 to $500 each. Also, as with everything in the skincare world, more aggression and more intensity isn't always good. And so if you have sensitive skin, maybe these face mask devices with really high power outputs are gonna be too irritating for you. And finally, the last Last thing about these face mask devices is that for three to 10 minutes a day, you are gonna have to walk around looking like a cyborg. And that could be a pro or a con for you, depending on your personality type. So here's my overall advice. Red light treatment devices have pretty impressive efficacy when it comes to both anti-aging and anti-acne effect. However, some of the LED devices that are available for at-home treatment don't produce the same level of power output as those that were used in the clinical trials. So you should be way more skeptical on their ability to deliver those potential benefits. Also, the handheld red light LED device called SolarWave, in my opinion, offers too inconsistent and variable an approach when you compare them to the actual face mask. And their misleading before and after photos is something that personally offends me. So if you want my recommendation, I think you're way better off getting the red light face masks from more reputable companies. Even though they are more expensive, I think you're much more likely to reap the actual benefits as compared to these flimsy handheld devices. And once again, to clarify, none of these companies have paid me for this video, which really is a shame because it took a lot of time to make. So if you wanna support this kind of unbiased content, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And if you wanna know more about evidence-based anti-aging treatments, check out this video about retinoids. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.